certainly respects our businesses. I, I'm not one who wants in any way to cause unnecessary problems for any of our businesses, racetrack, whatever. But you take something like uh, most of the businesses you mentioned, they've been there for years and years and years. And, and people are used to those. They, they, if somebody moved into that neighborhood, they knew that was there when they moved in. But for something just to start up and disrupt the peace and calm of an entire area, neighborhood, anybody who lives near where it's happening, uh, that's a different situation. And, and I think we can cover hopefully all of that in whatever ordinance we come up with. And an ordinance needs to be fair and consistent and consider the various aspects of it like you mentioned. Well, what about me if anything? I think we'll just review that and bring it back. I agree. Mr. Morris? Yeah, Mike, just a, a couple of comments. <clears throat> One thing I kind of <clears throat> worry about with these kind of things is, uh, you know, if we start making changes and if we get it too, I guess you would say black and white, like that one that's enlisted in our folder here that's in 2010 where you start measuring decibels and doing all that stuff, it kind of takes away your flexibility. So I, I guess my first question, in your opinion, is the, is the one we've got pretty close to what we need? I mean, the, the issue, this issue with the gun shooting, it seemed to me like not too long ago we had another situation where that was occurring. I think it's different than the one you're talking about. I think about. it is different. And then they, either you talked to them or some, something happened that they, they quit doing shooting as much or something, I think. It's the same location. Oh, it's the same location? It, it stopped for about three months. And then it started back up? Yeah. It like Rosebud or something like that? Or, right. or whatever? Yeah. Okay, sure. so, it, okay, so, you know, I'm sensitive to the idea that you, you can't just run a gun range beside somebody's house all, all day long, but I, I really <clears throat> would like for you to take a hard look at this and so we don't have unintended consequences if we start changing it too much. I mean, it, it needs to be have enough flexibility that you guys can go out and enforce it without The, the key it in my too opinion difficult. is just discretion and being reasonable. And I think uh, I can work with Ty to make sure everything's where it is like it should be to uh, give the discretion as needed for each particular okay. event. So what about, and then the other question, what about municipalities that say, if we have a, a, a noise ordinance, do they have their own individual ones, each they of do. our They do. And do we have any issues with what they do versus what we're doing, or have you? We don't have no no influence on what they do. That's up to their, their board. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of times they'll fall suit unless they disagree with the noise ordinance itself. But okay, okay. Um, yeah, well, I would, I would just like for you maybe get with Ty and go back. You've got, you've got to enforce this. You're really the enforcer of it, right, once it gets approved. So I'd really like to have something that you think is workable that you guys could maybe do some research and come up with and address the issues like uh, Mr. Walker's talking about without having it do unintended things we don't want it to. The key is making it work in a rural county. Yeah. May I make a comment? I'm finished. Um, Sheriff, you, you just reinforced my thinking as far as, as far as why we would need an ordinance. Because you went out and tried to be reasonable and work with a particular person. Here it is just a few months later and the problem here, maybe uh, here, still here, maybe worse. So when you try to be reasonable and fair and, and, and use common sense and it, it works for a little bit and then doesn't work. It gets worse than maybe even before. That's where we would probably need something with some teeth in it. Right. You compare the noise ordinance to 94 to 2010, what was drawn up. It gives us a little more to work with. Now, like uh, Commissioner Morris mentioned, I don't know about measuring decibels. I don't know if you need your dep deputies running around with whatever you measure decibels to you, you know, you can tell if something's disturbing the peace and, uh, of 
above and beyond where it should be. So if we can somehow incorporate that into the wording of whatever we come up with, that's a judgment factor, but I think your deputy general would be able to use good judgment in enforcing it. And then make it work out. Sounds good. I, I figured you would. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Questions, comments? I was going to ask the board to give me time to, to uh, do the research on the business before I bring it back and get that part taken care of and see where we are. You can just let me know when you're ready and we'll put it back on. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. If I'm going to be involved, it needs to be fairly quick. <laughs> <laughs> if, I'm going, if I'm going to be involved, it needs to be fairly quick. <laughs> well, that's on you. What do you it's only taken 10 years to get to this point, so you yeah. should have <laughs> <laughs> Short rules. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to item G, the grant funding. Ms. Shannon Shaver. Yeah. So um, we've been accepting the grant applications from the small businesses and the nonprofits throughout the county for the whole month of September. And we received 43 applications total for the grant funding. Um, 18 of those were from nonprofits and 25 were from small businesses. I'm going to pass down just a, a breakdown of the applications. This, they're just numbered and the amount of funding. And then you'll see some spaces on there were some. There are only a few that did not receive funding. Um, and so we met last week. The grant review committee met on Thursday and Friday. Funding was recommended for most of the applicants at either their is actual it, loss or requested amount. It's two sheets. We went with the lesser of the one. the lesser of the two on that one, and we used that logic across the board for all the applications. Um, the applicants that did not receive funding were a couple were due. They actually had a gain in their revenue, um, or or other funding had been received, pretty substantial in in some cases where they'd already received a, a grant. Um, there was only one application not funded for lack of information, and we made three. I made three attempts to contact them to try to get their information that we needed, and I never could get them. Um, the original requested amount that we asked to use for the funding was five hundred thousand, and that's of course out of that CARES Act money, that's the COVID money, no county money, um, and because we, we were unsure of the number of applications that we would get. So after looking at all this and making cuts, we've still come out over that five hundred thousand, which we thought we might. So our total at this point is 575,713. And we're asking for permission from the board to have that additional funding from the COVID money to fund those applications at that, that amount that would require an additional 75,713 from that money. So if the board's in favor of that, we'd like to get that approval so we can get those funds out to the recipients that need them. Um, and then we'll also be notifying the few that did not receive and the reason and why they did not receive. And, and commissioners, I can also tell you, I was on this board along with uh, Mr. Oakley, uh, Julia, uh, Mr. Carter, and uh, Tori. Uh, or would you like to call him Terry, whatever you know him as. <laughs> but, uh, Tori I, was a big help. I can tell you, we went through these things, uh, uh, took our time, really studied over them. Uh, some people really got hurt in this. And the good thing is, a lot of these nonprofits and stuff, we made sure they was taking care of what they was looking at as well. We just didn't throw a number out there for them. So this was looked in great detail. Uh, we spent about, uh, it was half of one day and then uh, a few hours of another day. So yeah. we kind of went through it. Um, and I can tell you, I'm in favor, since this is from that COVID money, it's got to be spent by December 31st. I'm in favor of, all, of going ahead and putting this $75,713 back out to our citizens that need our help. With that, I'll open up any questions, comments, Commissioner Walker. Well, First off, I appreciate the work that you and uh, the others involved have put into this. It's no easy task. I, I uh, sort of toyed with the idea of maybe being more involved, and I thought, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm trying to make my life more simple, not more complicated. So I appreciate the work all of you did. Um, I'm on board with the additional funding. Uh, I think we had a million or so to work with initially. Total, yes. No, I'm, I'm referring specifically to the amount the county had after we had given money to municipalities, and and we ended up with something around a million or so. Yeah, it was um, actually about 
1.4 and then now after um, some like this and this funding and then some of the things that will be spent like the ventilators tonight things like that would put us right around 800 to 850,000 still still left still left well and the reason I'm looking at that is even if we add the additional 75,000 or so we still have funds left to work with for other needs yeah and um, like tonight we talked about giving putting some of that money in for the DSS applications for energy assistance and rent assistance too so that we'll see what that that turns up to I think that'll be some of that funding too right so can I ask you've got 43 mm -hmm. 575,713 dollars uh, and the committee came up with these things. I just want to ask uh, will the commissioners be made aware of who this is or is that confidential information I spoke with Ty about that today we're going to actually um, when this is finished and we're approved and we give them their checks we're going to send them back every piece of information they sent to us so they have all their information back to them so um, as far as right now and uh, with Ty, with Ty's guidance we're going to keep their information confidential okay. I, I just wanted to know how thank you more questions or comments on this Commissioner Morris. Yeah, yeah it looks like a, you did a logical job here to me you know there's some numbers are way bigger than others but I suppose that's based on what you got the higher numbers, and I'll answer your question, that the higher numbers of one of the businesses that were completely shut down and really, I mean, they showed the loss. It was in okay. great detail, so. The, um, are the ones that didn't get any money likely to uh, understand or not, you think? I think, I think so. <clears throat> I think either they had not, and Julia was really helpful with that with the numbers part, I think they either had not totaled together all of their fund their funds they had received or maybe just some grants you know you don't really have to have a loss you can just apply mm -hmm. for funding moving forward some were requesting things like future things they wanted to do not yeah. really lost things so okay. I think they'll they will understand that they didn't actually suffer a loss some actually had quite a substantial gain oh, okay which was great for them so yeah, that's good so, on, right yeah yeah so is is the public likely to want to know how who this money went to? I mean, is it, I'm not sure about the confidential versus yeah, we're, confidential. we're not sure either. I mean, if I, I think if somebody probably makes a public records request, then we probably would have to give the information. I don't know that for sure. This is sort of a new new subject. Yeah, and there's, you know, tax information, confidential I don't know if somebody were to make a records request just specifically for who's applied, if that would, you know, be applicable. I don't, you know. I just think they'd be curious who the money went to and how much they got. So, and whether that's, we have to do that or not, or whether it's the right thing to do, I'd have to think about that. But. Yeah. I, I'm just depend on what the what the law is about it, too, because I'm not sure on that one. But the, the bulk of it, like I said, 18 nonprofits applied, and they all had very valid losses of fundraisers that haven't been able to be had, things like that. Um, the majority of your businesses were um, salons, um, gyms. some gyms, some things that really had hardships that were actually shut, forcibly shut down with no, you know, no, no half capacity, any of that for quite a bit of time. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of, not a lot of restaurants, very, very few restaurants apply, but I think you a lot have of some restaurants, so. Had a couple, yeah, yeah. a few, but Did you yeah. have, um, um, what was I going to say, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, oh well, the, uh, <clears throat> did every private business that applied get something? Can you do it? Do you no. remember? No, every private business did not. So and, every, did and actually, out of all of them, only one nonprofit didn't get anything. It was because they didn't actually have a loss, and their request was to expand and do something different. So it didn't really meet the criteria. They weren't missing a fundraiser. They weren't, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, they hadn't lost anything during that. Well, the, there's seven you didn't give it to. Were, uh, what's the breakout of profits versus nonprofits? Do you have to remember um, One nonprofit didn't get funded. All the rest of those are private business. Yeah, there's how many? One, two, three, four, five. There's, uh, so six, six businesses didn't get it that applied. 
And the and one nonprofit actually had a gain okay. and was requesting future use money. Oh, okay. So, so when, when uh, I'm okay with adding additional money, by the way. And um, when is it going out? As soon as we can, I'm going to, um, as soon as you all approve for us to use the additional funds, I'm going to do the check request forms from finance and we'll get them out as soon as they can. I can get that printed and they can get the checks cut and we'll notify all the recipients and the, those that didn't get anything. Okay, then the last, my last question is, can, can the um, ones that didn't get it apply for a follow-up review of why they didn't get it or something? Were you already planning on doing that? We or? didn't really put anything in the application about that just for them to have like an appeal right or anything. Uh -huh. Basically, they checked the box and signed that they were understood that by applying for this, they'd not guarantee any funding. So we don't have to we don't have to do that. I mean, we certainly can, and I'm very willing to explain it to them. I'm going to write. I'm going to put it in print and send it to them too. But I'm also myself or anybody on that committee could explain to them exactly how we came to that conclusion and the amount of. One, I think one of the private businesses had a, over over a hundred thousand dollar gain, mm -hmm. and that's not slighting them. That's great for them. Yeah, that's good. And if they, you know, I'm sure they do need things and have specific things because of COVID. But it's just hard to justify giving that funding to somebody that had that. Yeah, I think it would probably be good to and maybe just offer to the ones that did. Yeah, get it. If sure. they if yeah. they have a question, if they don't, then. We go looking for them. And, and and a couple of those applicants that didn't get anything, I know very well, so I can very much explain to them okay. if they have questions or if we need to take it any further, we can. But I don't think I don't foresee any okay. problem. Then we can decide later if we end up having to publish the names of right. the company. If something right. happens and we have to do that, we we'll need to or whatever. Okay. I think the lady at the NC Pro office is probably going to block my emails pretty soon for all the questions <laughs> I've asked her. Do we have to vote on the additional money tonight? Do we I'd like to? for you to just say, because we voted on the 500000 so if we can just vote to add that 75713 to fund those, you know, at, at the, the approved ones. Is everybody okay with moving that to action tonight? Yes. That'll, that'll give us time to start getting those checks printed. Well, mixed feelings, but uh, I know you do. It's such a good thing, though. You feel good about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have, yeah, that's right. Look at the kids, Jimmy. <laughs> Make a motion to, to agree. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll put that as item C action. on the action agenda then. Okay, perfect. Then we want to item H, energy slash rent assistance program. So that's me, too. So this I just got today. So this was just, a, just kind of a general question from Stacey Elms, the SS director. Just saying, she saw this grant fund. We we're talking about the grant funding. She said, "Do you think we could use this CARES Act funds for some programs through DSS that give the help for utility and rent assistance? They do that big program first of December, the LEAP program that does all of the power bills, buys heating oil, wood for people, things like that. They have a pot of money that comes in for that, and it doesn't last very long because a lot of people are in need. This year, it's especially not going to last very long because they're getting extra applications. Their volume's way up." She said. So um, she can definitely use it for that. It's, other counties have done programs through, like we did this grant program, they've done them for their public for mortgage help, rent help, utilities help, anything. But we can use it that way and funnel that money through their application process. I don't have a dollar amount because we don't really know what they're going to receive as far as application request. But we can, when they bring, send up the request for that, for the, um, the utility help, the, you know, the rent assistance, the money can come out of that fund up and through December 31st, and then it will have to start coming out of that other pot of money. So it would just give us more money to work with for longer if we could approve to take. I don't think it'll be a huge amount of money like this grant program or anything, but it would certainly help to make our other money go further. And I could update as of after the time's over on actually how much was spent out of the CARES Act money. Well, we can do a dollar amount. And then we could always come back. Yeah, we could, and we could always come back if it looks like it's going to go way over, and we still have. I, I just don't want to. I don't want to waste any of this funding that we've right. been given. I want to do the most good we can do with it for for people. Well, I feel better. It's helping out the citizens. It's been a rough time for some people. Some of us have been knocked through this. So we, I see. Yeah. Well, Jake mentioned maybe just allocating a hundred thousand dollars to start with. I agree to that, with that. And then we'll see where that goes to, and then. If, and it can stay in that same fund, so it can be used for something else if it's not used for that. So. Any more questions, comments on that one? What do we do with it? We're going to put it on discussion for next time or what? Or? Um, 
Well, what? we we added it to discussion this time. Stacy would Stacy would love to know that she can start using that that funding so she can get those applications and sort of start funding more of those. We'll do what Jimmy Just hates words and put on action. <laughs> do what Jimmy hates words and put on action. <laughs> well, I don't have much on action. I don't mind things being on action. I just every time we move something from discussion to action at the same meeting. I have that ongoing question. Is this really passing the test of urgent? And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Mr. Moore. I was just... It is. Yeah, um, is this money that's time sensitive to get it spent? Is that yeah. same December 31st? Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, so, yeah. yeah, that's a reason to do that. Yeah, I think just, you know, and it's, and it's a huge help for them. Yes. Well, let's have what we got to do. Let's do it. Uh -huh. So if, if I get consensus, I can add that, the energy. And God, Dana, you're consensus. still around. Think about it. I agree with Commissioner Langford. Okay, all right. Make a motion to approve it. Right. We'll so get we right here to that. Action, so, okay. Action. All right, we'll go ahead and get to action agenda now. Item A, the Wallet Code and Pinnacle Convenience Site Operating Hours. Do I have a motion on this? Make yes. a motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve. Right. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Item B, portable ventilators. Do I have a motion on this? Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. That was six, right? Six. Yes. Six. 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 Yes. Yes. Item C, the grant funding. I have a motion for approval. The additional. Um, additional 70, almost. 75,713 yeah. for a total. So we're making that total now 575,713. So motion to approve. Second. Discussion. One quick question. Do you want these papers back tonight from us? We no, you can keep those. No, you can keep those. So are they like pu public records? Yeah, they, yeah, because there's nothing on there that indicates anything about who is. You know. <coughs> okay. It's fine if you want to say that 18, you know, I can send you that information too, where the 18 were nonprofits and 25 were for profit and the breakdown of who, you know, how that played out. Yeah, I, I was just curious. I didn't know if you wanted to keep it. In Yes. So, so the, what we're doing, the discussion, what we're doing with this motion is just approving the seventy-five. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, motion to uh, the second. Any more discussion on this? All in favor, say aye. 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 Well, Ernest and um, Ronnie. Well, they were kind of at the same time. So, who was the oh, actual motion? Okay, yep. and the second. Ernest made the second. I want item D, the Energy Rent Assistance Program. I have a motion. To allocate the $100,000 for that. Great. Allocate the $100,000. Second. Arnest got it. Arnest second first. And first, and motion was first. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Shannon, could you please take us in closed session? To consider and take action with respect to the position to be taken by the county in negotiating the price or other material terms of an agreement for the acquisition or lease of real property pursuant to General Statute 143-318.11A5. Do I have a motion to take us to close? I move. Aye. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Being closed. Oh, what kind of use
Matias. Oh, Billy for him. He was for him. I thought just doing doing it for Christmas. Not mine. <laughs> I'm not a commissioner. I need some extra income. Yeah. Maybe Santa Claus. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Meet and adjourn. Yeah.